Let's talk about the Evolution Cart D5's wireless ignition module. So as you know, when you get a new Evolution Cart, you get two wireless key fobs. And what's happening behind the scenes is they are communicating with this ignition module. The ignition module is located underneath your glove box. So there's two screws here and then the glove box will pop out. And it's kind of sticky taped down on the inside here on the bottom right hand side on the plastic there. One quick point about these Evolution carts is all over the cart, you will see relatively cheap, non-waterproof electrical connectors. This is not like a side-by-side -side or a snowmobile where you would see automotive grade waterproof wire harnesses. So this is a fairly inexpensive uh, Molex 10 pin plug and you see plugs like this all over the cart. So really just keep that in mind. These are almost like computer uh, plugs and computer harnesses. So you wouldn't power wash your desktop PC or you wouldn't leave your desktop PC sitting outside in a thunderstorm. And so what happens with these is the connectors can get moisture in them, they're exposed in the back. And so that's always something to kind of take a look at and check. So just remember that these are golf carts and if possible, you know, store them out of the elements, never power wash across the top of the dash, anything like that. Coming out of this lead goes to the start stop button. So the start stop button on your dash uh, plugs into this and this goes into the ignition module. This ignition module gets constant power, constant 48 volt power from the battery. So even when your cart's not on, this ignition module, one of the pins on the back here is getting constant 48 volt. When you push the start button, what happens is you close the contact and it sends a signal to the ignition module. So the ignition module now knows, hey, this person is trying to start their cart. So if you're running into troubles, one of the first things to do is just triple check that this is properly connected to your start button. If you're hitting start and you're not seeing anything happening, make sure that this side of the start button is cleanly and accurately plugged in to your ignition module harness. The next thing your ignition module does is it sends out a radio frequency, which says, hey, I'm the D5 cart ignition and I am looking for a key. So if the keys are within range on the 433 megahertz frequency, they will respond to the box with an acknowledgement. Yes, we're here. Yes, we're within range. So the only time the box and the keys are actually communicating is after you hit the button, it sends out a quick burst saying, hey, are there any keys? And then at that moment, if a key is in zone, it responds and gives it the permission to turn on. So it's not a constant communication. It's not a proximity beacon. Uh, it, it doesn't know if the key leaves the cart uh, or if you drove away without it. Generally, all it is is at the time of hitting the button, it sends out a request. And if there is one within zone, it provides a response. So when the ignition is happy that it's received a response from a key, what it does is it essentially acts as a relay and closes a contact and passes that 48 volts from one pin down to the other pin. And so generally that's all the relay is doing is it's now closing almost like a key, like a good old fashioned key switch where you take 48 volts and I'm now passing it from one wire to the other wire. That is all that this relay box is really doing for us. It's high tech, it's got a start button, it's got keys, but fundamentally it's not much different than a good old fashioned key at the end of the day from the electrical perspective. The other thing you'll notice when you look at the wiring diagram on the back is there's a few other things. Up here we have um, on the back of this relay box, it sends out pulses to our turn signals. And you may have noticed that when you uh, push the start button, your front and left turn signals and your rear taillights, uh, they blink quickly. I think they blink twice. So that is the ignition box that's sending uh, two blinks on these pins to those uh, pieces. Otherwise, it's a fairly simple system. So you have your ground wire, you have your two relays. Up here, you have your always on, which is uh, pin one. And then down here is the, uh, the yellow wire. So we're going from orange to yellow. Orange is always on, yellow is when we uh, want the cart to turn on. And the last pin the ignition box uses is actually this one down here, number three. And you'll see it ends up going up here, three, to your throttle box. So what is happening behind the scenes there is how the box automatically turns your cart off after 15, 20 minutes 
is it has a little internal timer in it, from what I understand. And when you use the throttle, it's not giving you full throttle position. It's essentially sending it on off, on off. Was the throttle being used or was the throttle not being used? So that line there is telling the box, hey, the person's driving it, they're using it. It's resetting that timeout uh, counter from when is the last time this person was driving the cart. And if it doesn't receive any other throttle motions on that line, it eventually sets the timeout and turns off, turns off the rest of your cart. So if you ever really did lose your keys and you were stuck in a pinch or this is acting up in a crazy way and you can't figure it out and you're really in just a pinch to get home, uh, one piece of 18 gauge wire and bridging the gap uh, from pin one over here to pin 10 uh, straight across, orange to yellow, that will uh, start the cart for you. So like that, you can bypass the ignition system. And uh, if you wanted to put a key or a switch or anything else on your cart to use instead of the wireless key fobs, that's essentially the loop that you would want to close and connect. Do be careful when you're working on this uh, because obviously the orange wire has 48 volts constantly going to it. It's not keyed as part of your ignition. So uh, just as you're working on it, make sure you're being careful and accurate and not grounding that out. So if you think your ignition box is acting up, I have seen these on Amazon for about $250. Comes with a new ignition box, a new button, as well as two keys. So, but today, sadly, that seems like one of the few ways to get a replacement key is not so easy. If you lose a key and you want another one, some people end up buying a new ignition box that comes with two keys paired to it. I have been exploring kind of as an engineering exercise if we can figure out what the frequency and the data that's communicating back and forth with these are. And if so, maybe we could find a way to build a uh, less expensive key fob replacement and have the ability to clone your key fobs uh, proactively if you had maybe three friends or four friends uh, around the house and you wanted to have more keys. So I am trying to work on that, but we'll save those details for another video. So that's the debugging steps that I would try. Um, if you've worked with these keys before, you know how to put them into a pairing mode and pair new keys. Um, or if you have any other advice or if I got anything wrong, um, comment down below and let me know. Uh, I do see a lot of people having trouble uh, in the forums and on the Facebook pages with their ignition. So I just kind of wanted to make this video that shows where it's located, kind of how it works, some of the things going on behind the scenes. And if you do end up ordering a new ignition because you think yours is acting up, uh, these would be the steps to plug it in and that's where the harnesses are. So that's all for today. I may actually end up ordering myself uh, one of the wireless ignition modules off Amazon, the replacement version, uh, just because I am tempted to crack open this box and see what's going on on the inside. So. Thanks again for watching. If you guys have any other suggestions for videos or things that you wanna know about your cart, let me know and I'll try to dig into it. I made another video which goes through some common debugging steps uh, to do with the wireless ignition. And so I'm gonna to try to use that video here in the end card. So if you wanna do some debugging using a multimeter to just to do that, uh, to see if you can figure out what's going on when your cart won't start when you're hitting the button and nothing happens, uh, that is the video for you to do a bit of the steps before you go out and buy another ignition system.